Another Foxtrot, this is Zero Bravo. Request dust off. Send mine dogs. Over. On the battlefield, a few skillfully placed anti-personnel mines can immobilize a patrol, even a battalion. Modern explosives have become so hard to detect with conventional devices that the Royal Australian Engineers have had to develop new countermeasures, and one of them is Sapper K9, the mine dog. The superior sensors of the German Shepherd dog are being developed through training and breeding to produce what the Army describes as the ultimate explosive ordnance detection expert. The results so far have been encouraging, and the engineers believe that the use of the mine-detecting dogs would mean fewer casualties in any possible future conflict. The dogs have a sense of smell 100 times greater than man, and they are trained to sniff out the explosive. Ajax. Back, boy. What you got, mate? That's a boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. The Ajax. training is carried out at the Army's School of Military Engineering at Moorbank, near Sydney. Training begins when the specially bred pups are only 21 days old. In charge is Sergeant Keith Burley. It was decided by scientists many years ago that the that 21 days in the, of age in the pup's life was a critical period when the pup's mind was actually alert enough to absorb the type of training we do here at the kennels. The initial uh, training period actually consists of 14 weeks of training, which is carried out seven days a week with a minimum of twice a day. The system of training we use here at the kennels is a, what we term a food stimulus association. That is to say that we associate the finding of explosive, which we call stimulus, with the presence oh, of food. That's a boy. That's a boy, Rex. Sick on. That's a boy. Sick on. Sick on, Rex. Come a young pup like this doesn't oh, quite know exactly what's going on. All he knows is if he goes out on the word of command to work and finds this funny smelling substance that we term explosive, he's going to get not only verbal praise as a reward, but also food. Sick on. Seek on, Rita. Good girl, Rita. The initial Seek training on. lasts Rita, five Rita. months, Rita. seven Rita. days a week Rita. and six hours a day. At all training sessions, the performance of pup and handler are assessed. With the handler, he's assessed on such things as his hand signals, what Seek we on. call voice inflection, his general handling of the dog, the teamwork, and also how he uses the area. With regards to the pup, he's assessed on such things as his concentration, willingness to work for the handler, his agility, that is to climb in over obstacles to get to the centre of the explosive, his actual indication of the explosive itself, whether he pinpoints it or not, and the actual control the handler has over the dog, that is to say, how difficult it is for the handler to control the dog during the search. That's a good girl, Rita. That's a good girl. What you got? That's a good girl, Rita. Good girl. Yeah, the bomb in here. That's a good girl. The development of the ultimate dog of war demands preparation for conflict in simulated battle conditions. It tests the working relationship of the sapper team, man and dog, a team that functions largely on a bond of trust. Seek on, Rita. Seek on. That's a girl, Rita. Rita. Seek on. Seek on, Rita. Seek on, Rita. Seek on. Where is it, girl? Seek it out. That's a good girl, Rita. Good girl. Hey, good girl, Rita. The progress of the pups reflects not only their superior inherited talents, but the love, care, and attention given by the kennel staff. Good morning, Nancy. How are you, eh? Had a girl, Nanu. Oh, Nanu, Nanu. Nanu, come on. That's a good girl. There are 18 dogs in the unit, and they all receive top dog service. Yeah, there is quite a bit of work involved in the kennel situation. It's definitely worth it. Uh, I think most of the people here uh, really do enjoy their work. There's one thing that's always, I find, is significant, is you always see the dog in the long run as being the one you've got to look after. You've got to take that extra um, care and looking after him. But you know you can look after yourself, but he needs the help, not you. When you're working for dogs, you seem to strike up some sort of friendship. Well, there is a bond, and it's mainly because you have the pups from the day they're born, work with them every day of the week. It just becomes part of your life, really. It's one of just caring. If you don't groom a dog properly or make sure his kennel environment is clean, later on you run into problems like diseases, 
um, but could have external parasites that could create problems later on. You know you're doing something that's going to help the dog work better. You care for the dog, he hopefully he cares for you, and in most cases he does. Mascot and pride of the kennel is Sergeant Saber. Although not part of the breeding program, he's a former canine sapper who's won wide respect. He's just one of those dogs you turn to affectionately. He's possibly the best working dog that we've ever trained in the, in the kennels. He just has a character all of his own. He's almost human. You can speak to him, you can play with him, you can do anything you want. He doesn't like peat caps. He's uh, well known for leaving impressions on the rear end of um, people over the rank of captain or major. Um, he's aggressive, sure, only in protective uh, of the handlers. Because our dogs are working dogs, they're possibly better fed than a lot of non-working dogs. Our dog's ration consists of basically 40% fresh meat, 40% dry food in the form of a biscuit, and 20% canned food. This is on a daily basis. On top of this, they also receive fresh milk, eggs, a vitamin supplement in the form of a powder, and oil. Their ration is worked out on a basis of calories consumed per working day. <laughs> Sand and surf provide the opportunity for the training teams to relax, but it's still exercise. It also strengthens the bond between dog and handler. There's a serious side to excursions away from the base training ground. The young trainees have to become familiar with a diversity of environments. Simply walking or driving through new locations puts the dogs at ease among strange sights and sounds. experiences help prepare the dogs for operational tasks far removed from the conventional battlefield. These days emergencies often occur in the civilian domain. For example, the terrorist bombing of the Hilton Hotel in Sydney during the Commonwealth Prime Minister's conference last year. With the Hilton bombing we were called in after the blast and the dogs were employed in such tasks as searching vehicles, goods coming into and out of the hotel and also parts of the hotel itself. In Canberra we were used to search the Lakeside Hotel where the American Vice President was staying, the Parliament House and also the American Ambassador's residence. With the incident of the coastal freighter, we spent approximately four and a half hours searching the freighter itself until we rendered it clear. We maintain that in all these areas that we use the dogs, once the dogs are cleared an area, we maintain that there's no explosive device in that area at all. Not all trainee dogs make it through the first stage. The final assessment session is often agonising. Right, fellas, the final assessment of the pee litter, Pete and Paddy. First of all, temperament and nervousness, right? Uh, on nervousness, a few Only the best the dog and uh, best bitch of each litter are retained to advance to the Army's selective breeding program. The others are discharged, a decision some handlers find hard to take. I'll have to give him a two minus. Paul? Yeah, I'll give him a two minus also. Jody? I'll only give him a one. One. So which dog are we going to keep, Pete or I, Paddy? I say Pete from what I've seen, I think he's a better dog. According to what you said through all the, all the assessment and on the scores it's Paddy. It stands well, out I better think, than I Pete. I think we'd have to stick with the full assessment and keep it as Paddy. Yeah. Taking the overall picture. I'd say Paddy. Yeah. Well all I, want to say, all I want to say is, if we're going to keep Paddy, Pete's staying behind too isn't he? Yeah. Well we'll get, give him a bit of chance to work you know, and just see how he turns out. Because we'll keep this the same the way it is now, but if we see a drastic change, I think we should review it. All agree with that? Mm, no, going, that. going on what we've got here, and all the assessment, the figures that you argued about, we'll, we'll have to retain Paddy and we'll discharge Pete. The argument, training and dedication will continue with each new generation. 
And with each litter, the army gets closer to the development of the ultimate canine sapper. 